Hey Ian. Yep. How come uh, an enormous Poe calls a dreadnought a fleet killer? Yeah. But this it was guy could, the big old cannon. It was defeated by one X-wing. He, he, he just took out the surface guns. Remember, he didn't destroy. He took out the surface guns so they could bring the bombs. They make it look really easy. Really, really easy. I'm going to default to the rule of cool. Rule of cool. Okay. Right. It made a great shot, and it didn't really break anything cannon-wise. Did you like the your mother joke? You know what? I, I guess where some people didn't care for the, the some of the humor, and there were a couple ones that pushed it a little bit free, but it never got to the point where I'm like, okay, if, like it, it was still fine. If you haven't seen it, Poe you know literally what? does a your mom joke. But you know what? It meant that it kept Huck Scott to have a personality in this movie. Was it? Was he been more of a pushover? Yeah, but he got to have an actual personality. He did. He did. Huck Scott to be a character. I like that. I like yeah. Huck's character in this all yeah. throughout as, like this, every as, move. as this almost you know sibling second in command who's so mm -hmm. sick of his masters who are so driven by this force. he's like can we just be a military and just do yeah. our job yeah yeah no i, I yeah. like Tux a lot i i absolutely he was well written. I absolutely see him having a conflict with another character without getting spoilery in the next movie Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, without getting spoiled. Yeah, yeah. I just, if you're done, we see a power no, struggle not, between him. We're not done with Huck. A power yet. struggle between him and someone else. Yeah, yeah, we're not done with him yet. To those just yeah. joining us, welcome aboard the Disneyland Railroad. Bye, Oscar. To ensure a safe ride, <laughs> stay seated with your hands. Hi, hi. Uh, Here in Critter Country, you can join Winnie the Pooh. So what we're gonna do, Ian? Rare yeah. Rabbit and Rare Bear. I'm gonna actually look. Fun-filled adventures. At the cabin. Oh, hey! Yeah, I'm gonna do that this time. We're gonna film the cabin this time. On the Mark Twain or on the train? No, no, on the train. Okay. Because I'm say. not gonna film it when we get on the Mark Twain. I was gonna say. <laughs> it's been a going joke, but we've been around this river probably 30 times. And the last time I looked at the cabin here was. Entering the frontier as it looked more than a century and a half ago. This is my favorite part of the journey. Around every bend, there's I can see. No train went by. And we just passed the uh, the not stagecoach down there. What did you? I, I don't know if I really covered that with you. Did you like I our not stage? I was the one who mentioned it to you at first. No, no, I mean, did you like the not stage? Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it. You had a good time? Yeah. We, I know we didn't do a lot of rides, but yeah. maybe next this time. This tunnel yeah. signals our transition yeah, from the frontier to another kind of year. The ones you'll find on Mickey and Minnie Mouse. How about that joke? Our next stop is Toontown Depot. No. Official train station right. for Mickey's <laughs> Toontown. Right. I think there should be a backlash Where over that joke. And all their friends live. You know, for all the things that Disney people get upset about, it's not that it's, 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 half the time it's not the stuff they should get upset about. You know, animated I want to be upset about that. I'm one of those people. Here, please wait until that joke is horrendous. To a full stop. Remember your personal belongings. You mentioned to me previously in another conversation that you didn't have a problem with Canto Bright. Not really, no. Like the, the there's a chase scene that. You know you're like you're the only one, right? There's a couple other people. Because <laughs> there's some there's some underrunning themes in that scene that I think are important. At so the end, you can't you can't do that some other way. It, maybe it could have been done better, but it's still, tighter at least. It still worked for me the way it was. Thirty minutes that took. Every time, every time we see that, every time we watch Last Jedi, we're gonna lose thirty minutes of our life. You're losing more than that. No, I, 
So the rest of it is worthwhile, I think. <laughs> they could, could have been handled maybe a little tighter, maybe, but it still works for me. Cool. There's just just like the there's a chase scene that I kind of start to lose it a little bit. But other than I, that, I found it to be very uh, prequel esque myself. I said it worked for me. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> it's funny you you have, you have a higher tolerance for Star Wars than let's say for stuff like Mission Breakout or. It's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't get excited about Mission Breakout, but no. <laughs> you have a higher tolerance I for Star Wars stuff. Is mediocre as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Stay seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train, and please watch your kids. ¿Qué tal amigos? Bienvenidos a bordo. Para su seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga las manos. One of the things they were discussing was changing the, this gate right here. Shifting it over. Shifting it to the left. Now we're going to look back and see if that, how feasible that is. We're now As we pass these bushes, we'll be able to get a good luck. To a land inspired by visions of tomorrow. Both so that road is... And yeah, you can go over there, right? Here you'll find rocket yeah. ships and stars. Turn it to the left a little bit. Well, it seems like that would take a lot longer than... And if you look exactly overhead, the maybe and a glimpse the, and the of a time that small was supposed to be down before. This is Unless the they do all that stuff in advance. Daily operating motorway. That's something to be done the entire now. Western Hemisphere. Right. Uh, Gliding above Disneyland since 1959. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not saying they could have just shoot the with that cube, but I don't think that's what's happening right now. Fun-filled roadways of the Autopia. Oh, look, Autopia, right here. He just said it. Behind the wheel of these cars. No experience or license. Oh, I just saw Osimo with the bird. Into soaring spaceships and doing battle with evil empires and emperors. Tomorrowland is definitely the place for you. Yeah. Speaking of rain, thanks and have fun in the future. For the rest of you, just sit tight. We'll be on our way again in just a minute. Literally. <laughs> Silent right now. Audio should kick in. Why is he not talking? To those who have just there we go. Board, welcome. The next leg of our journey will yeah. take us from the fantastic world of the future to the present.
Oh, well, welcome okay. aboard the Every Disneyland Railroad. Like, we are embarking on a grand circle tour of the Magic Kingdom. We'll be stopping at New Orleans Square, Mickey's Toontown, and Tomorrowland. We'll also visit the Grand Canyon and make a trip back in time to the primeval world and the age of the dinosaurs before returning to Main Street Station. Literally. Well, that was quick. We've arrived at New Orleans Square just in time for our Indiana Jones adventure. We'll head that way now. Fresh paper and stuff. Congratulations on all you folks at the New Orleans Square train station for making the excellent decision of riding the train this afternoon. Excellent choice. Okay, so I, only one thing, thing that comes to my mind right now, uh, how did you feel about the, the, the plot point with the uh, uh, tracking through hyperspace? Hey, so we pointed out that it was, you know, they name dropped in Rogue One. They did, but yes. But if it wasn't, it's been about 30 years timeline-wise since the events of the original trilogy. Why couldn't the First Order and Imperium have developed new tech during that time? I heard a complaint about cloaking also. That's a thing that existed in Rebels, too. Yeah, so in this, well, in this case, it wasn't like invisible. It was like cloaking their signal. But people, oh, not the actual ship. I noticed that, yeah. So uh, but people seem to miss it. They said that. Why, why couldn't they just see those ships? Because they were cloaked on their, they cloaked their signal. So they were able to mask the signal somehow. Okay. Yeah. And then something happens where that tips the, the bad guys off to, to, to try checking for that. Yeah. They do. I heard there was even beef with, a, with like, this sort of slow speed chase through space. Uh... You know, with, with the whole uh, fuel thing being a plot point, like, when is that ever discussed? But, I mean, that's a real thing. Fuel's a real thing. Yeah, they, they wanted, to, I mean, forever, they wanted to frame it kind of like, you know, like a naval, like a, you know, oh, naval yeah. ship battle, right? Yeah. And, right. Yeah. That's, just because it's in space doesn't mean everybody's got to be flying through hyperspace all the time. And, yeah. and the idea is that if, they, if someone tried, for, say, the first order were to jump ahead, they would vastly overshoot. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Whoa. Sorry. I, I don't. I couldn't understand why anybody had a problem with that as a as a plot device. The idea, the idea that you know, fuel is a part of the story. It should be. There's some time frame stuff in there that gets a little well. There's messy. that. Yeah. It's a little messy, but again, none of that is enough to be like, oh, this ruined it. I'm like, I mean, do you watch Game of Thrones? Time doesn't exist in Game of Thrones. I don't understand how they manage time in that show at all. I don't know if that's fair to make those comparisons, but nobody seems to be talking about that. Well, I mean, there's it seems like to this and Four Seconds, there's a lot of Game of Thrones casts who have been like, hey, we're in... That's we're, true. We're, Maybe we're, already, like, we're already filming in England. Can we hop over here and send me an extra in the background? <laughs> we're not busy at the moment. We're between seasons. Because seriously, again, I don't watch that show, but I'm, yeah. a lot of people... I'm, no, there's, right there's, now, there's some. There's one, there's yeah, one, there's one. There's a couple. The, like the one female pilot in Force yeah. Awakens, is, 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 is Jessica Hedwig, is from Game of Thrones. Yeah. And she was in Iron Fist. Oh, really? Halloween week. I'll have to look at that. Hey, is that Jack Sparrow? Oh, he's done, though. What's he doing here? He was probably on his, just on his way back safe. But from where? Wandering around being a character. Okay, let's go to uh, Indy. Get your fast pass. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked!